Welcome back to Chechen. Now, we all want a peaceful and credible general election, and so we're asking the IBC to respond to lingering concerns about their preparations. Our guest is IBC Commissioner Dr. Rosalind Akombe. And so, from our viewers, I'll allow you to respond to each as they come. What would happen on the day of voting if I found that my name is not in the register or where I registered after I verified and confirmed at that polling uh, center? We don't anticipate such a situation, uh, and that is why we're encouraging people to start to continue checking the, our number, the 70,000 number, SMS. We'll also be making the web portal available so that people can check. But if you go to a polling station and on that day, and you put your fingerprints and they don't find your name in the register, then, you know, unfortunately you won't be able to vote because that means you're not in our register. Okay. Um, what security measures, we, we talked about this before the break, but um, for the sake of this viewer, um, because security is a key concern mm -hmm. in this election, what security measures have you put in place to avoid crowds destroying everything if they sense de defeat? I'm not sure it will be the crowds, but um, mm -hmm. the supporters of you know, mm -hmm. um, specific candidates. In the last one week, we've been working, uh, our staff have been, we've been having trainings uh, with all the security agencies from the, from the counties. I was in Bomet, Kiricho, and uh, Kisi, where we are doing this training. And you find some people. Sorry? You yes, find we have some find candidates. Some <laughs> but, uh, so we are working with them to ensure that they, they understand the procedure so that they can be able to provide enough security during the election. Okay. Um, We've already answered these uh, questions, but I suspect some of these viewers um, came, uh, joined us late. Very quickly, mm -hmm. um, ask her why they haven't published the register, um, and then goes into details of the um, e Election Act. Very quickly, for, for someone who's... Uh, the register has been published, and any Kenyan that wants to have access to the register can write to us and uh, will be given the, the register in a CD format. And, and bring a, a banker's check. They need to bring a banker's check. It's check important case. that you say that. They, <laughs> they also need to, they need to write to the CEO and then they also need to come with a banker's check of 20,000 Kenya shillings. But the other thing you also said is that once the polling centres are ready, yes. you anticipate being able to publish the registers. Yes. Because they're we're being used for their primary absolutely. Um, purposes. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, let's come to the ballot papers. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a court uh, case on at the moment. Yes. You published the list of final candidates yesterday, mm -hmm. but you've been printing ballot papers. How does that work? <laughs> we have been printing the ballot papers. Uh, we actually sent to the Kenya Gazette those names on the 22nd of June. So for us, for our legal purposes, the names were published on the 22nd of June. We only started printing the ballot papers from the 23rd of June. So we, we were within the legal provisions of having gazetted the names before we started uh, doing the ballot papers. And we needed to, f to really work on the, we were running late in terms of uh, working on the ballot papers. So we've started that process in Dubai and it's going on well so far. But you have, uh, the commission has alluded to the fact that there are about 500 cases of, of people who are dissatisfied with the party nominations mm -hmm. uh, which you have not concluded mm -hmm. so how then do you go ahead and publish uh, um, con uh, and, uh, publish actually by law the names of the contestants for these positions and go ahead and print ballot papers on the names of the cases that are still being being, being and there are some cases that we're still looking at there are people we're still you know barring from <laughs> being in the race that will have to dig a it so there is a corrigendum that will be going out and we'll have several of those corrigenda that will come up uh, once the cases are cleared. But you, you, know, you can't stop gazetting because there are cases that are going on. That is why there are provisions for you to be able to come up with the corrigenda to address those, those concerns. But let me explain something that, is, that I think is really important for Kenyans to understand. Uh, and this for me comes from you know, listening to people saying why are you doing the ballot papers too early when the cases are going on. It's actually more complex than that. It's not just the ballot papers, it's the Kims. For us it's actually not the ballot papers. The ballot papers we could add names uh, as, we, as we continue with the process of printing. But it's the Kims technology because now by law you're required to transmit results and for you to transmit results there's a module in the Kims where you need to put the names of all the candidates so that the, you can be able when you are because when you are transmitting the results the, the Kims in each polling station the gadget already has the names of all the candidates there 
we are time bad. We only have is it 33 days uh, to election. Mm -hmm. That's less than a, you know, close to a month mm -hmm. to election. We needed to prepare those uh, 40,000 or so kids for each of those polling stations. There's a lot of work to do. Breaking down the register to each polling station and then breaking it down and putting information for each candidate, the various candidates for those polling stations and ensuring that, that, that we counter check to make sure we have no mistake. We had to have a, close, a closing date. We had to close that process so that we are able to deliver, the, put all that into the technology, into the KIMS, and then have those gadgets ready to be distributed to all those 40,000 or so polling stations. So it, it's not really just the issue of the ballot papers. It is the technology aspect of it that is a legal requirement that we needed to ensure that we finish in time so that we don't have mistakes and test it so that we know that when you are getting the kit, the information that is there is what needs to be there. There is no mix-up. That addresses the technical um, aspects of the printing of the ballot papers, mm -hmm. but there's a political aspect to it, mm -hmm. um, you'll appreciate, which is why there's a court case. Um, and so I'll come to the panelists now, because we know that the opposition has alleged that there has, uh, you know, that the, um, uh, the printing company, mm -hmm. the Dubai-based uh, printing company, al um, has had contact with State House. And when given again the context of electoral contestation in Kenya, you then select these people um, as your supply, you know, printers of ballot papers. Again, you shroud yourself in all sorts of contra controversy. So, are, are we? Is the IDC deliberately shooting itself in the foot when it does when it when, when it does that? Look, Udwa, everybody has had contact with everybody. This is, I mean, the world is a global village. You can't run away from that fact. But to the extent that IEBC failed to come out clear and explain to Kenyans, this is how we procured al -Gurea. these are the uh, uh, targets that they met, and this is why they are <coughs> the best. Instead, they chose to talk to the political leaders, who can turn the narrative into what they want? You that's don't have to be dead failing. by now. No, no, it's no, not yet it's dead. Not dead. It's not um, yet dead. It's almost dying. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. In one way or another, everybody has had contact with everybody else. I am sure even the IABC commissioners. Uh, commissioner here, I'm sure, greets uh, Moshimo Raila Odinga, greets Moshimo Uru Kenyatta. Does that mean she's going to influence? Mm -hmm. the, the, the complaint is that uh, since the, the company that has been selected uh, has a relationship with people in the state, in house. state house. Therefore, they will put extra ballot. That will stuff the ballot. Will stuff yeah. will put extra ballot, which will be stuffed. Is there a possibility that can happen anyway? That that whether whether you get the South African one or whether you get one from Burundi, people likely to put ex extra ballot paper, which will be stuffed. Is there a possibility that can happen? Regardless of who the printer is. Okay. Um, Ballot stuffing. I mean, I, I would I would say that in Kenya, ballot stuffing is a bygone era uh, because of uh, the provisions that have been put in the law, whereby you have a maximum of 500, um, 700, 700, 700 voters per polling station. So you in a in a situation where you don't have an excess. Yeah, of you can't have. Votes. And and by the way, one one of the things that I should have said, uh, which which I really think is, is nice about this Kim's technology, is that the system would not allow you to transmit more than that. If you, if you put in, you know, 700, and if they have 700 voters, let me, let me not use the 700 voters. Let's say you have 690 voters in that polling station, yeah. and you send with total results that are 691, it will not transmit. It will not transmit, it will not work. In addition, if you are coming back to vote twice, because that's maybe uh, somebody is thinking about that, that uh, you will ballot stuff by coming twice or three times, the, the, we have put an alarm in the king. Uh, the moment you come in, like you, you know, once you've done your fingerprints, you do your fingerprints again, the noise is so loud, everybody else you know, knows that, that you're, trying, that to you're trying to vote twice, and it won't allow you to vote twice anyway. Uh, but at least you'll already, be, you'll already be highlighting that you are coming twice and there's a problem and the police need to take care of you. So the issue of ballot stuffing is really, is really not here. We, we have allowed for 700 uh, voters. What if the turnout was 350 and you, you put 400? And that is why... That's fine, as long as it doesn't exceed yeah, 700. Yeah, it, doesn't ex it can't exceed that. So it's but, possible. But what Mutegi is saying is yeah. possible. Yeah. 
But what I'm, you know, we've put different measures uh, in terms of uh, what we're calling ballot control uh, on polling day. Ballot control is that, you know, when you will be coming into a polling station, once you're given that ballot, any ballot, you raise it for everybody who's there to see that it's only one that has been given to you, stamped and you go in. The other thing we have done is reporting, uh, regular reporting, uh, four times during the, the, the polling day because we want to keep monitoring. Because the KIMS technology also gives you the turnout rate, the voter turnout at 9 o'clock, at 4 o'clock. So if, you, if there's no correlation between the number of ballots given uh, at 9 p.m., you know, if you have more ballots given at 9 p.m., then the, the voter turnout that the KIMS technology is giving you, then that is, a, that is why we are having all these air assets available for for the helicopters for us to land in that pol polling station and take you to where you belong. But that's contestable, so Commissioner, because we have areas that. where people say, I will go to my farm in the morning and vote in the afternoon. So in the morning you will see numbers trickling. From 2 o'clock you will see massive numbers. Yeah. But be that as it may, what Mr. Mutegi is saying here, the Kim's machine will trigger a siren when you mm -hmm. try to identify yourself a second time. Yes. But the manual register does not have a siren. So what will happen given a scenario in my polling station which is uh, Woodwork's stronghold and so Mutegi's agents are not there we will wait until 3 o'clock if there are 600 registered voters and there are only 200 we will yeah. stop the yeah. remaining yeah. 400 and yeah. Charles that's why you heard me all over what I've been trying to stress for us as a commission that is why the verification aspect the biometric verification is crucial and that is where we are spending day and night to ensure that that does not fail because that is the only foolproof situation you're going to, uh, solution you're going to have for, 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 for cases like those ones. And those are cases that have happened in this country, at least from admissions of... And will happen if it fails, if, if, if it technology fails. And that fails. is why we are investing, and that is why you, you know, the Kenyan people, need to hold us accountable on that and ask us the hard questions. That if these, if these machines worked for a whole month, IBC, we will not accept you telling us that they have failed today because we have seen them work and that is why for me it's putting that accountability back to us and putting the, pre the necessary pressure on us to ensure that that system works because that is the only foolproof way of uh, av averting what Mutegi is saying. But it, is there any possibility that a ballot can be stopped? You know, without, you just get a ballot and mark and put... No, but that's, mm. that, is that, that is not a possibility mm. in, that, in that context. The possibility is more what uh, Charles was explaining, yeah. that whereby if you don't have the complete, yeah. if, you, if you choose, if you go with a complementary mechanism, then you can all sit down in my Kisumu Central constituency, you know, in Yalenda, and you say, uh, look, uh, only 200 people only 200 have turned up, turned up, 400 have not. Mm. Let's just rule up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. where, um, and you, and you stuff the ballot yeah, board. That, uh, yeah, that, but you don't need extra ballot papers for that. That's what I'm trying to explain, that yeah. the, it's not ballot stuffing in the, in the 80s, 90s, whereby you, because you don't have a limit of the number of, uh, of people in a polling station, you could, you could stuff the ballots. But in, this, in the era of in, in this, the 2017 election, what is possible is, is that, that if you have a complementary mechanism, then it's possible for people to just come and look at how, pe how many people have not turned up. You, you, you yeah, just make a ballot paper themselves. Yeah. Do you have symbols? Actually, <laughs> the, 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 our ballot papers are one, one, uh, one, security, one security measure away from being a Kenyan currency. I mean, they have... <laughs> <laughs> They're like legal... <laughs> they are like legal tender. They have all these various security measures. We have also serialized uh, the, 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 the ballot papers that you can, you can track the ballot paper to its polling station. Mm -hmm. And that is why when, when we say that, uh, you know, ballot papers, you know, when we say we need more time to do this, it's not... It's because of all these other things that you need to do. It's not just like printing a book, which also is, is a lot of work. But it's not like printing a newspaper. There are all these things that you need to do. They have to be serialized. They have to be packed, uh, packaged according to the serialization, according to each polling station. I'm talking about, for that um, you example about voters who don't know how to read and write. Ah, who, who, symbols. Who will use symbols? Yes, they are. They only know these things. Yes, they, don't, they, are they don't. Symbols. They are symbols. There's they an issue symbols. around yeah. that because yeah. you recall that when we had the e-log observer. Um, and you recall again from the 2013 election that we had um, a disproportionate number of spoiled votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and with the nominations, they, the, the observers recorded a bit too much mm -hmm. um, assisted voting. Mm -hmm. So how are you um, addressing that? 
for me that's why the voter education is, is very important and we've been, we, we want to ensure that we move very quickly with that so that people know what you can mark and, 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 and just to confirm yes there are symbols so you have the symbols and you have the names there and um, you know we have seen I, I have seen also some statistics that for me look like an anomaly in terms of the number when you look at the literacy rate uh, exactly. in the country and you then you look at uh, you look at the number of assisted voters this is something really that doesn't doesn't add it's up a political that, strategy in that in that in that way yes. yeah, it's a political strategy mm -hmm. if i gave you money and i'm doubting your loyalty i'll have to have woodwork uh, mm -hmm. assist Help you, you. Mm -hmm. to vote mm -hmm. um we're, we're coming to the close of the show but very quickly you need to recruit over 350,000 um, officers and one of the concerns has been their credibility because remember you want to give Kenyans a credible and peaceful election. How are you going to ensure that? I mean I, have, I, was, I was struck uh, over the weekend when I was in Bomet uh, with what our, my ret one of the returning officers told me. You know, he, she looked at me and she said, Madam, you know my life depends on these presiding officers and that is why I am personally looking at each of their backgrounds because now the, our returning officers feel the weight after the Court of Appeal issue, they feel the weight of their responsibility more than they have ever felt and also because now you have the Election Offences Act that outlines step by step what would happen to each person. It's not, you know, that wasn't there in 2013. I think that has raised the stakes. It has raised the level of responsibility among our staff who are doing the recruitment. And you're seeing them, you know, somebody, there's one returning officer who called me yesterday and said, you know, Madam Commissioner, for me, I'm going to recruit only presiding officers who have something to lose. Because if they have something to lose, then they will ensure that the election in their polling station is run well. And so those are the kind of, those are the kind of discussions you're hearing from our, from, from our staff. We had a meeting two weeks ago at Safari Park with all our returning officers and all our staff and Chairman Chibukati really stressed to them that the election depends on them. The commissioners do not recruit presiding officers. The commissioners do not recruit uh, clerks. And that is why the responsibility really re is really high on our returning officers to ensure that they check on the credibility of each person that they, they pick. You know, I have seen some reports that are really, you know, well, and I mean, the opposition of, has been of, of, of alleging police, that, you yes. know, of police being recruited. That's absolutely not the case. People are talking about cases in which we are having meetings you know, planning coordination meetings with the police because you need to sit down with the police to secure the places you're working. You need to sit down with people who are working on intelligence because they know what is going on in the Al-Shabaab areas to be able to tell you, uh, Al-Shabaab uh, prone areas to tell you what is going on there. So when people see us having those meetings, those discussions, then they, they, they you know, they conclude that we are trying to recruit them. That is not the case. I mean, we need more police officers to work as police officers out there during this election period. We do not need them as police teachers? class. Teachers, yes, and, and really this is <laughs> brings me yeah. to the issue of fake news, mm -hmm. whereby you have been seeing people uh, say that the TSC has said we cannot recruit uh, yes, teachers. Yes. I mean, they have come out to clarify that. Actually, yes, the CEO came out very categorically yeah. and mm -hmm. said yes. that is not because you see, you even know, her signature. And that's what I say when you when we are in an era in which there's a lot of misinformation going on, a lot of people going out and and trans, you know transmitting things that are not correct. And that's why we keep saying that before you click that button. Please verify before you transmit, before you say something. Please verify before you do that because it can lead to... So in response to the integrity of the officers um, that the IBC will be working with during the polls, you're appealing to professionalism, responsibility, but you're also reminding them that if all of those appeals fail, that the law has been strengthened exactly. and will catch up with them. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so as we wind up now, let me come to the panelists now and then I'll give you, you. an opportunity to make your um, final remarks. Um, the question we asked our viewers... Um, was how prepared uh, is the IBC for the election and you recall that we asked this question about three weeks ago during the national conference and the feeling there um, I believe I think we ran a poll was overwhelmingly negative people thought the um, IBC was not prepared at all on the basis of what Commissioner um, our conversation with Commissioner Akombe this morning how would you rate the IBC's um, preparations on a scale of 1 to 10 I think they're about seven, eight. Seven, eight. I think they're they they doing a good job, except, of course, these punches from or because of stakes, the interest by politician. But I think that we should give them the benefit of doubt to do their work. Charles? Before I, I, I rate them, it's quite interesting. 
I don't envy their position. The law says elections must be held on 8th August. The same law says certain things must be done within certain deadlines. And the law is very clear. They must conduct a fair, acceptable, credible election by certain standards. Six of ten. Six of ten. Um, where, the, where are they losing your four? They're losing my four because of communication. Your donkey. <laughs> where are they losing your two or three, Mutegi? Uh, the, uh, the communication and also the fact that uh, they are new, you know, and they looks like uh, there is this, this, this connect between the secretariat and the commissioners, and the fact that uh, they removed some people, which means there is a problem there. On what they, on, on what grounds would you say that? Uh, they look like they're weak. There is no, there is no. They don't seem to be reading from the same page. It's not a coherent yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, commission. Um, uh, Commissioner, your thoughts? Um, Mutegi has been a bit more generous, but something that we didn't address, institutional weakness, particularly as you're a new commission. Although we did, um, I, th I think uh, Charles was generous in saying that you've covered a lot of ground for a new um, commission. Um, but again, the same Charles is holding <laughs> four. Uh, uh, four marks from you Very because crucial. of your poor communication. So we'll, we'll be working very hard to ensure that we earn Charles four marks and the two, two or three marks that um, Tegi has taken away from us. Uh, but, but I think generally, um, we, you know... What, what grade I would you give yourselves? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, what would you... <laughs> you Self-assessment is one of those uh, biggest <laughs> challenges that I have. But I, I think what I would say is that um, if you actually look, when people ask about election preparedness and whether we are ready for this election... You're dodging my question. Also, on a scale of one <laughs> to ten. <laughs> I think there's an important point, would work. I, really no, no, want, I don't want to number. lose this point. Okay. I don't want to lose this point. That when actually you look at the various timelines that were set, you know, uh, you know in, in law, if you look at each of the various timelines that were set, you know, whether it's on testing technology or whether it's on uh, training of staff or whether it's when you needed to have the technology in the country, we have actually not been the ones that have shifted the timeline. We have actually met each of those various timelines provided for in the law. Because in other places, you would judge the commission's effectiveness on how far they have, how much they have had to keep on changing the timelines of going back to parliament and saying because all those things were given no and deadline. saying please give us more time to, mm. to be able to do this for each of those various things we've met the timeline in the places where the timeline has been shifted it's been shifted by the court by somebody going to court but it's not because we were not ready you know whether it's water registration we were ready and so on that basis so <laughs> what school would you give yourself on that basis I would, I would give ourselves uh, an eight an eight an eight, an eight hoping that in the next uh, a uh, few days we'll be able to, to get into, 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 the, into, into the levels of 10. Okay, so we'll have to end our conversation there this morning. Our thanks uh, to the IBC, um, IBC Commissioner, uh, Dr. Rosalind Akombe, for your time this morning and your candor uh, with us. Our thanks also to our panelists, Wutegin Jiao and Charles Odiambo. My name is Udra Kamimo. Thank you for watching. Cha-cha. We'll see you next week.